Do I not have it in there? Because there's only one answer for number four. Ah. Is that the second one? Oh yeah, that's the answer for, for A. For A? Yeah, because the answer for A is a number. The answer for B is a sentence. Is 4A tricky? No, no, I just, I forgot to square. Oh, that would be a problem. But I got um, 66, 665 instead of getting 667. Um, that could be my error too. But okay. okay. That was a very dramatic reaction <laughs> see about what happened. So if you give your answer like this, just with joints, instead of kilos, it's fine. Is it? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Dang. No, you don't have to convert. Okay, shall we continue now? So this is our, our next lesson. <coughs> I know it's okay. Ready guys? See back Ken? Ready? Yeah, so you can write this down. carried one kilogram up the hill. Okay, fine. Now, instead imagine one thousand ants, you know, the little little insect, and they each carry up one gram. So the two of you are doing the same thing. Okay. You're carrying up one kilogram, but then what you see is one thousand ants and they each carry up one gram. Uh, but they do it one by one. So so you walk up with your kilogram, and then one ant goes by, one gram. Another ant, two grams. Another one, three grams. Uh, how many journeys will the ants require? Um, A thousand journeys, okay. So, on the top of the hill there are two piles. Your one kilogram, and the ants one kilogram. Who did more work, the colony of ants, or you? I think it's you because it's heavy. The both? Same. Why is it the same? Oh, the amount of... Um, same result? Yeah. Same result. Same result. You both carried a kilogram up the hill. But there is something quite different about what the ants are doing. What is so different in the, the story? End, the ants did more repetition of both here. Yeah. That is true, but why does it feel like the answer shouldn't be the same, even though it is the same work? They're carrying it one by one. Yeah, and what's the what's the effect of carrying it one by one? How does that change their story? The time is longer. So what this example illustrates is not only is work important, but also how quickly the work is done. So we feel like if the work is done quicker, that somehow that's more. You, you, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like it feels like that should represent more of something. And it does. It represents something we call power. You have more power if you do it quickly. That's the, the thing here. So, um, this gives us the reason for this concept of power. And power is simply the work that's done but how quickly it's done. So it's the change in work per time. So as a formula, it's simply work divided by time. So
So who has more power, you or the animals? You do, because you're doing the same job quicker, in less time. Uh, does this concept of power make sense? Is, is it okay? You understand what I mean by power? Um, now the units are, of course, joules per second, because it's joules a second. However, we use a special unit for joules per second. Does anyone know its what? name? Very good. Yeah. So this unit is also called a watt. And one watt of power is one joule per one second. Named after James Watt, who invented the steam engine in the UK. convert electrical energy into light energy, you've not used any energy. We know this from conservation of energy. <coughs> so when that electricity becomes light, um, it, it's not destroyed, it's just this energy has turned into light energy. You've converted it, okay? But the electrical energy didn't change into only light energy. What is the other type of energy coming out of that? Heat energy, yeah. It was converted into light, which is what you want, but also heat, which you don't want. Okay. So, that, that's about 100 watts. So that means per second there's 100 joules of energy. Uh, how much of that do you think is actually in the form of light energy, and how much do you think is heat energy? You know, maybe it's 50-50, maybe one is more, maybe one is less. Uh, what, what do we think? So, 100 joules per second, 100 watts. How much do you think is actually light and how much is actually heat? What would you say? 90-10. 90-10. Which is 90 and which is 10? The 10 is the heat. Okay, so 90 joules light, 10 joules heat. Okay, good. Anything else? Any other ideas? I don't know, it depends on the bullet. Yeah, so let's say... A, a normal old-fashioned bulb like this one, not any fancy bulb, just the cheapest bulb you can buy. I'd say 50/50. You would go with the 50/50, okay? Anyone else? No other opinion? 50/50. For which? Okay, so generally speaking, everyone feels that the light is at least 50, but up to 90 uh, joules. Okay, so the answer is 99 warm, 99 heat, one joule of light. Okay, so from that light bulb, only one joule of it is light energy, 99 joules of it is heat energy. This is in every. Now, the old light bulbs, this is why these new LED light bulbs are so important because. You know, I think like, I, I have them at home, like a LED light bulb, you know the LED light bulb? Mm -hmm. They would normally be four joules of energy total, and one joule would be light, and three joules would be heat. That's much better than one light and 99 heat. Much better. So, um, in fact, it's one watt of light and 99 watts of heat. This leads us to our next idea, which is called efficiency. Now, what does this word mean, efficiency? How fast. Not necessarily how fast. How much work is done within. Yeah. How much work is done within set time? Not, there's no reason to do with time. Output yeah, it is an output input thing. So, what precisely does efficiency measure? More output than in. Uh, not More quite this. Not quite this. If you use language like wasted energy or useful energy, 
efficiency tells us how useful energy, how, how much useful energy there was. Like that light bulb, how much of that was actually useful energy? Only one percent. Only one percent. Okay, that's the efficiency. So the definition is efficient. The definition is uh, efficiency is a percentage. <coughs> It is the percentage of useful output com compared to input. So as a formula, it's useful output over total input. I think this is what you were trying to get to. What is it? Yeah. Yeah, what's that symbol? Oh no, no, this symbol. Oh. Don't know your Greek letters? No. <laughs> okay. This is a Greek letter. Its name is Eta. Is it a new letter? You know your Greek letters, don't you? What's the first one? I don't know them by order. Alpha. 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 Beta. Beta. Um, oh. Gamma. <laughs> Delta. We're jumping down to Omega. Yeah, okay. So this is one of them. Eta. Now, ideally, you would like Eta to be 100%. But because of heat loss, it's always less than 100%. You can never get perfect efficiency. Never. Some energy is lost by a heat. Uh, also, if we divide the above and below by T, we can change the formula into this. Useful output power over total input power. You get the same answer. So you can use either energy or power. Work or power. It's the same thing. What symbol? The atom? It's like this. It's like a N, but not quite an N, because this would be, this would be N, you know. Any luck with the bank, or still a problem? I haven't learned yet. Huh? I haven't learned yet because they haven't given me the master's. Uh, ah, okay, okay. So you have no bank account yet? Using so my, using my salary. Oh, you can do that. You can use it here. Oh, that's good. That's good. So you're not penniless then? No. No, okay, that's good. So do you, do you have to pay a lot of fees to use yeah. your bank card here? Yeah. yeah. Is it like a stupid amount of fees? Very. Like what would it like you know if you say you wanted to take out a hundred euros for a shopping or something, how much would they uh, charge I you? I can't take it out in cash. I can only use it. Oh, you can only use it yeah, electronically. I think I can only withdraw in, in a month, one thousand. Yeah, like cash. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We got this. Yeah. Okay. Continuing. So, let's have a look at an example here. A boy lifts a 2 kilogram physics book off the ground a height of 1.1 meter. It takes him 2 seconds to do this. What is the power in his arms? Okay, so, here's the book. It's 2 kilograms and it gets lifted 1.1 meters in a time of 2 seconds. What's the power? Hang on now. There you go. Alright, so what's the formula for power? Work over time. Yeah? Now, what work is the boy doing? Uh, I mean to say, like, what type of work is he doing? 
he's left him, okay? So, if he's left in the book, what energy is he giving into the book? What energy is he pumping into the book? Yeah, you can think of a kinetic. And he thinks of his potential. Um, I suppose the thing, though, um, is if you were to look at it here, it's not moving. And when he lifts it up to the top, it's not moving. So I know temporarily it'll have kinetic as it moves. But if you are only to look at the final position compared to the, the start position, what energy would you say it was given? It was given potential. Okay. So this formula is MGH over T. Yeah? Now what's the M to G 9.81, H 1.1, and T is 2. So is that something like 10 watts? No, it's not quite 10, is it? 10.8. 10.8 watts. That's the power in his arms. Are we happy enough with that? Yeah? Yeah, it's okay? So the work the boy has done is the work of giving its potential energy. Lifting it, essentially. Alright. He got his energy from his breakfast. However, half the energy is wasted, wasted as heat. What is his power now? Okay, so it's not really 10.8 because his efficiency is only uh, 50%. So that means if he eats two joules of energy, he can only do one joule of work. Like there's a waste here. Uh, well, no, sorry, maybe more accurately to say as he's lifting it, uh, <coughs> some energy is wasted because he's getting hot and the book is getting hot and all of this. So, using my formula, 50% should equal useful output over input times 100. Okay, now, uh, what is the, um, uh, the output here? Is it the 10, or no, okay. is the 10 point 8 the input or the output? No, it's the output. Because that is what the, that is what the result is that you want. The results that you want is the lifting of the book. That's the useful output. It's the input that we don't know and what we want to calculate. Yeah. How, how do we know it's 50%? Oh, it's given in the question, oh. yeah. Uh, I said he's half, his efficiency is 50%. Okay. So it means that the power input is 21.6 watts. It, it makes sense that he needs to be more powerful than the job requires if energy... Yeah? How do you get 21.6? Oh, I cross-multiplied. I brought the P up and the 50 down. And don't forget, it's 100 here. So it's 2 times 10.8. Yeah? No? You didn't get 21.6? Uh, let's see. I bring the P up and I bring the 50 down. What's 100 over 50? Two. Two times 10.8 should be, I hope, 21.6. Am I doing too much in one step there? No, 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 tell me if I am. 50 equals 10.8 over x times 100. Okay, alright. Do you get what I'm saying? He needs to be more powerful than the job requires because he's not perfectly efficient. Yeah. So the input, his input is 21.6 watts. He would need this much energy as an input into his arms uh, work. Okay. Continue. 
Continue? Yeah? So, next. Right. A 1,200 kilogram car starts at rest and reaches a speed of 100 kilometers an hour in 10 seconds. If the car was perfectly efficient, what is the power of the engine? It was perfectly efficient. So, yeah, it was 100% perfectly efficient. What's the power of the engine? Um. Okay. So, uh, power, what's the formula for power? Work over time. Now, what type of work is the engine doing? Moving, Moving the car. So, what type of energy is the engine putting into the car? Um. Kinetic energy, okay? So, this formula here, which one do we use? Half mv squared. A half mv squared over t. Now, do we know the m? We do. Do we know the v? We do. Do we know the T? We do. Uh, the only problem is I should convert 100 kilometers per hour. This would be 100,000 over 3,600 meters per second. What, what's that number, please? 27.7. Thank you. What is it? 27.7. 27.7 mm. meters per second. So if I put that in, that would be a half times 1,200 times 27.7 over. Squared. Ah. Squared. Should be pretty big. Yeah, what is this? Four six zero three seven point four. So that is forty six kilowatts. Now, the engine is not perfectly efficient, so it will require more energy than this to do the same job. Let's calculate what it is. I tell you in part two that it's 40% re-efficient, which is pretty realistic for a car. So let's see, 40% efficient. So 40% equals, now is this 46,000 input or output? Ah, you went the wrong way, yeah, uh, it's output. Because this is what we want the car to do. Yeah, yeah, my Okay, no, I believe you, that's all right. So 46037 goes on the top, and we'll say X on the bottom. So the X is 46037. Yes, you're going to say something there, uh, George? P so potential energy is basically all of inputs? Potential energy? Yeah. Like we said in the previous example that we gave the energy to whatever we was getting carried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same thing here. But the now it's kinetic energy. So the engine is given the energy to the car. Mm. Yeah. So basically, kinetic is always output, and potential is always input. No, 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 not necessarily. Um, no, both kinetic and both potential could be could be input and could be output. It depends on the story, you know. Um, like for example, if I was making some machines and the machine works because perhaps I lift up a weight and I release the weight and the, as the weight falls it turns the wheel or something to do mm -hmm. some work, you know. Well then the input energy was the potential energy because, you know, that's yeah. how it got the, it drew, it drew the energy from that, you know. So, I mean, it could be anything, it could be anything. And uh, what did we get here for the X? 11509 one, one, uh, Okay, so so that is 115 one, kilowatts. We have to write kilowatts. I like to. You don't have to. <laughs> I like to. Okay. Uh, have we got this? Yeah? Can you have this, George? Yeah. 
Is mm-hmm. that a nun or a boy? Uh, probably a nun. Continue. Okay. Right. Uh, now, uh, two more to go. So, uh, a pump in a basement pumps oil from a tank at 6 kilograms per second into a boiler which is 10 meters above the tank. So, uh, I'll try and draw this picture for you here. Uh, you have some oil, <coughs> and here you have uh, a boiler. Isn't that it? Yeah. And what happens is, um, you know, it, it goes along and pumps it up into that. And it does it at 6 kilograms per second. So every second, six kilograms leaves this guy, and then six kilograms per second goes into the boiler. Okay. This height here is. Uh, what ten point one nine uh, meters, and um, the oil enters the boiler at two meters per second. So you know what? Let me draw this a little. Well, no, it's all right. 10.19 meters. So it flows in here at two meters per second. The the, the speed going in. Okay. Right. And the efficiency of the pump. So I'll draw my pump here. Here's my pump. The pump is pushing the oil up. The efficiency of this guy is 75 percent. And my question is, what is its power? Okay. So we'll have to do this uh, slow and steady. So who's doing the work here? The boiler, the pump, or the tank? This is a tank of oil. The pump is doing the work. Okay, so the power of the pump is the work divided by the time. Yeah? Now, the time here is a little bit complicated. So what we'll do is we'll look at what happens in one second so we'll imagine that we watch for one second so that means the time is one okay now what type of work is the pump doing how would we describe what the pump is doing okay. yeah so what type of energy yeah, it's actually both, both, yeah. Because, look at the oil here. The oil is at rest, true? And it's at the ground. So, what energy does this have? It has no energy, zero joules. No kinetic, no potential, okay? But when the oil is now up here, two things have happened to it. It is moving in the boiler, and it's at a height. So it has gotten both kinetic and potential energy. Yeah? Now, the kinetic energy we can know. Remember, we're looking at one second. So in one second, how much oil do I have? How many kilograms of oil? Six. So that's a half times six. And what's the speed of the oil up here? Two. Two. And the potential energy is m, which is 6, g, which is g, and the height, which is 10.19, and this is over 1. Okay, so if I calculate this, this is uh, 64 to 12, 72, I think, watts. I hope. That's a 10.19 there, by the way. One nine. No, maybe it's not this. Two squared is four over two is two. Is I oh, I don't know about that. Now, <laughs> see, but can I type? Oh, you're right. Then I'm totally wrong here. Ah, no, I'll, I'll trust you. You're telling me it's 
611 uh, watts. Now, is that input or output? Think carefully. Is that useful output work that you want done, or is that input going into the pump? What do we think? In or out? Mm -hmm. I had a 50 50 chance <coughs> and it went the wrong way. It was out. Because this is the work you want the pump to do. You want it to take the oil from here up to here. Okay? But it will need more energy to do this because the pump perhaps has some heat coming out of it. And we know it's 75%. Okay? So, now I have 75% equals uh, out over in times 100%. Uh, percent. So then the X will equal 611 over 75 times 100. So the power in is 815 watts. That's the power of the pump. 815 watts. Got that? Yeah? Yeah? Continue, guys. Uh, Matt? Not yet, okay, no problem. And that? obviously a harder example. Um, next example? I think it's the last one, yeah. It takes 30 seconds for a car of mass 1495 kilograms to reach its top speed of 214 kilometers per hour. Uh, what is the power rating of the engine? So let's write this info down. What is rating? Oh, Japers, that is totally misspelled, sorry. Disgraceful. Yeah, it's the same word as the last question. Rating. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's draw this. So there's the car, it's 1495 kilograms and it takes it 30 seconds to reach its top speed of 214 kilometers per hour. So first things first, let's convert that into meters per second. Uh, let's, let's do that.
So that's 59.44 meters per second. Now, this question seems easy because you might be saying, well, it's, you know, it's just a half mv squared. And we know the m and we know the v, so it's, it's all fine. But there's a slight complication because the small word I used, I said it's top speed. It's top speed. So what does top speed mean? Uh, terminal speed. So if you were to picture the car here at the end, when it's going at 214 kilometers per hour, there's two forces on the car, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the force from the engine, and then what's this force from? The drag, the drag yeah, the friction, the drag here. So the engine is doing more work than you think. The engine is doing two jobs. The first job is it's obviously making the car go very fast. But the second job it's doing is it's fighting against the, the drag. Okay. So we need to do a little bit of calculation here. Um, let's see. Do I have enough information to get the A? I think I do. Because I have the U is 0. The V is 59.44, the A I don't know, and the T is 30, and the S I don't know. And I think I would like to get the A and the S, okay? So what can we, what can the first ones do? V equals U plus AT. Can someone do 59.44 divided by 30? What's that? It's about nearly 2, isn't it? 1.98. 1.98. Nine eight. Okay, and let's get the S. Uh, S equals U plus V over two times T. So uh, fifty nine point four four divided by two times one point nine eight. Fifty eight point eight four is the answer to that. This one. Okay. Now, what did Newton say? Uh, I don't actually. I don't want to call this F. Uh, I want to call it some different letter. Uh, I'll call it T. Okay. So Newton said S equals M A. And in this story, what's the S here? T minus D. It's the total S. Okay. Now, um, do we know the M? We do. Do we know the A? We do. Do we know the T and the D? Mm, we don't. We don't. But let's just have a look at what happens on the side here. So here's the car, and it's going very, very slow. So there's um, a T here, and what about the drag? There's no drag. Okay. And here the car is going a little bit faster. So here we have... Um, the same T, of course, and what's happened to the drag? Uh, we have a little bit of drag, don't we? Yeah. Now, at the end, when it's going at its top speed, this is T, and what does this equal? Should be T as well. So what's the drag doing? The drag starts at zero, and then at the end it reaches the T. Yeah, at the very end. So. Because the D is changing, that's a little bit messy. So let's imagine that the D is roughly constant. So if I have two numbers for D, what would be the best estimate I should use for the average D? Well, I should say it's roughly 0 plus T over 
two. So that's roughly a half t. So that's my best estimate for d. Let me go back here. So I'm going to say that d is roughly a half t. So t minus a half t? A half t. So if I just bring that up, 1495 times 2 times 1.98, that gives me the t uh, for the engine, the force of the engine. What is that, please? Five nine two zero point two zero point two newtons. So we're able to work out now finally um, the work. Work is force by distance. What is the force of the engine here? It's the five nine two zero oh point two. And what distance is the engine doing this force for? We said it earlier, it's 58.84. That's the distance. Okay. Now, I don't want the work. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. I want the power. So, how do I change work and the power? What do I do? What's the formula for power? Divide. divide by time. So, if I just take this and divide by 30, I now have the power of the engine. Okay, so what's the power of the engine now? Let's calculate that. One one six one one. So that's eleven point six kilo watts, yeah? One one six one one. That's a very low powered engine, but oh well, I, I must have made up Oh do you know what I probably did? Uh looking at the mass and the time, I probably picked a small car like a Nissan Micra or something, I don't know. Very hard example, but it's the last example, so that's why it's so hard. Yeah. Fifty eight point eight four. I I hold. Ah, did I make a mistake on my ass? Hang on. You uh, ah flip. Sorry, wait, attention, red alert. Um Small mistake here. Thank you, Matt. The formula is U plus V over 2 times T. I wrote the wrong number here. It, the time is 30 seconds. So that should be a 30. So that's just going to change my S here. I was wondering why it was so small. Okay. Uh, 59.44 divided by 2 times 30. Right. The S should have been... What's that? Like 58 meters is not much distance. Uh, so I should have I should have noticed that. 891.6 meters was the S. So that guy should have been 891.6. So right, this is much better. Uh, 176 kilowatts.
Okay, so that's not a Nissan Micra anymore. I, I can't remember. I think the power rating for a Nissan Micra engine or, or one of these small cars is like, I think it's like 65 watts, yeah, uh, kilowatts. So this would be some car with a 2 litre engine, I'd say. Hang in there, Siva. It's nearly lunchtime. Did you have breakfast? Ah, Siva, that's terrible. No breakfast. So you have no energy, right? So where is all the kinetic energy for your writing coming from then? Last night's energy. Last night's energy, that's terrible. What was last night's energy? Pizza? Lunch. Lunch? Yeah, but what is lunch? Chicken. Chicken and rice? Okay. See, I had breakfast and I'm thinking about my lunch now. And then I'm thinking after my lunch, I want to go down to the mosque and get some coffee and cake. <laughs> oh. <coughs> my favourite one is the walnut, but he said he won't get that back to us. Tomorrow. The cake? Yeah. Have you tried the walnut cake? Nice. That's fine. Have you tried any of the cakes? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favourite? Just check one. Which one? Chocolate That's or lemon? Okay. Yeah. Chocolate one's good. Okay, did we write this down? Now look, no. to be fair. Is that 896.16? I think it's 891. What the heck is that? 891.16. 891.6 mm -hmm. Now as I was saying Let me just close this Can I close this? As I was saying This question is a very hard one And to be perfectly honest it is more difficult than what you would have in the exam. Okay, so just to be clear, that last example, I haven't seen one as difficult as that in the exam. Okay, now the one before with the boiler and the oil tank, I have seen that in the exam, but only once, like ten years ago. So mostly the questions will be of the difficulty where, you know, the one where you had the boy that lifts up the book or the car. You know, the, like the first two examples, first two or three examples. Uh, so if you were to look at the, the book here, just, just so you know for your own study benefits. Um, <coughs> you should be able to do all these questions. Number six was a, like an exam question, but from ten years ago. Okay. Um, but certainly question one to five. These are the type of questions you would get on the current exam. Okay? But anyways, whatever you had trouble with, we'll do that uh, tomorrow in the tutorial. Yeah. What time are we at? Yeah, lunchtime now.